So, it's been a while since we've done a tier list. So this is Resurgence, the tier list for Resurgence. Okay, Banquet's probably a C, I agree. <laughs> so Banquet's uh, 2 cost 1-1 one, one that gets swallowed at end of turn, and then it gives a 1-1 one, one buff. It's pretty bad, because you can just like clear the creature, and then you have the creature underneath that. Uh, Bloated Toad, equally as terrible. Maybe even worse. I don't know. You think it's kind of decent, theoretically? Like, if you can find a cleanup to it, I guess. Like, D tier were, like, really bad cards. This probably doesn't deserve that much hatred. Toad plus Mirror Phantom? That's true. That's true. You can, like, jump and get, like, a Phantasm off. That's true. I'll, I'll give it that. The this is awful. I mean... It's still got some stats, like it, it can be used, but I don't know. Just 7 cost 5, 7. So if you collect once, I guess it's okay. Like the stats to Feria ratio is okay, I guess, but it's pretty terrible. It kind of works, it's, it's like kind of similar to Blood Toad, I guess, like it works on paper, but like in practice it's really terrible. Like, I don't know. I think C tier makes sense. Victory Celebration is pretty bad. Has, has anyone used this card? I don't think I've ever used this in a deck. Turn 1 like, turn 2 double neutral, turn 3... Yeah, like there is that potential if you have it in the opening hand, I guess. And then it's like a 5 cost 5-7. Five, uh, and you get to move your lands aggressive. But like any other point in the game, it's... Like also if you're collecting already, then it's just a 7 cost. But I guess there's always an opportunity to collect once in a game with it. Put this in meme? I think so. That's pretty bad. I've literally never used it. Um, looking at Glass Phantasm, also pretty bad. Um, but I guess it's, it's like C tier solely for the reason that it can transform something massive, I think. It's pretty terrible, though. Uh, like, five legs is way too much. And it transforms it into a 5-3, which is still a threatening creature. <laughs> it's a Krog counter? <laughs> Everything in this... Okay. There's a lot of bad cards in this set, actually. <laughs> but, well, Tidelord is amazing. This is A tier. Um, really solid. Just 5-5 five, five jumper, but then it gets to be 6-6 six, six with a Triton. Pretty easy mechanic to pull off. Um, this card's possibly a B. It's not the best, but like, it's a 3 cost. Like, I think you're guaranteed at least one buff. You're gonna have at least one Triton. So like it's a three cost, like three, four maybe at worst, which is like, okay. It's not like the best card in the world, but I think that like there's better cards than it, but I think like B tier is probably okay. I don't know. It's good enough to run it in blue jump without feeling bad about it. Yeah, it's always like lacking compared to the other blue cards, but I think like B tier is pretty solid for it. Blossoming Kodama's pretty bad. I mean, okay, this is B or C. Um, so this is like six cost five seven. It's 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 literally like kind of similar stats to this, but it produces three forests. The thing is like, uh, when you're at five lands, which this requires, like the extra three forests don't really do anything unless you're land ramping. I think this is C tier maybe. It's kind of like on par with these guys. Um, Chrysalis is terrible. This might be like D tier though. Uh, the issue with this card is that it takes a creature off board, which means it kind of just, it like kills one of your collectors for a turn, or like a couple turns. But it can be used to like kind of pseudo teleport your creatures, or like protect your creatures. You can pair it with Doomsday to save your creatures, but I think like Balloonfish is like infinitely better in every way. I don't know, we'll, we'll leave it here and come back to it. Um, Dwardia's... is Dwardia A or B? She's, like, a pretty solid. I guess, like, situationally excellent. Because, like, like she's a bit expensive. Uh, a lot better than uh, Virgin Force, though. You can kind of just teleport her around and build her up. Uh, she's really expensive is the issue, but A tier is maybe okay. Uh, I think Volpine is definitely A. I think Volpine's actually just better than Dwardia. So it's one of my favorite cards, actually. Being able to teleport around the board just as a, a, a passive ability is really strong. Uh, which I guess makes Dwardia really strong as well. 
You think Dwardia B? I'm kind of like debating B or A. You guys think B? All right, we got two takers for B. We'll slot it into B. Because she's really expensive, both Faria-wise and land cost. And like in the meta right now, like it's kind of geared more towards like mid rangey things than slow creatures like this. Like one of the re one of the reasons green mono green isn't great in the meta is because they just have slow expensive creatures like that. Um, Beast trainers like okay, I think Beast trainers like C tier. It's like not terrible. Like there's just not many uses for it uh, because there's not that much beast synergy pairs with. Salamander okay because it's like a f zero cost 3-3 three, three essentially. Uh, I think we'll keep it at C for now. It's just that like this card struggles because of the lack of beasts. Um, also the fact that this is a mecha for some reason makes it just weird. <laughs> like if this was a beast itself it might be a lot better. Uh, the hippo is also really bad. This is like another C tier card. Like, 6 cost 5-5, five, five, 3 mountains, that's terrible. This guy's also C tier, he's pretty terrible. Um, really expensive, like, on paper, again, he seems okay. 5 cost, that just keeps gain. it keeps scaling with plus 1s. But this limits your power wheel a lot to only being able to plus 1. And it starts off as a 4-4, four, four, uh, 5 Faria creature is really expensive, and if it doesn't do anything, like, immediately, uh, and it's a non-green creature, like, I don't know, it doesn't really do much. Oh, actually, this might be worse. Wait, yeah, I just kind of threw this without thinking, but, I don't know, like, the turn you play it, it can be a 5-5 five, five for 5, and then plus 1s with it? You think it's D tier? Like, I think it can be okay. <laughs> You're not too flame-stoked <laughs> on this one. Let me quickly open up my other tier list just to compare with the rest of the cards because this should be compared with the other ones. D tier. Okay, Ignis is in D tier. Okay, we got to put it in D, I guess. If Ignis is in D. Yeah, okay. Fair enough. We can, we might be able to put a few things in D tier, actually. Um, actually, I kind of agree with this in meme, then. If these are, like, D tier things, I kind of agree with this being meme. Okay, other things could probably slot into D here. Bursting Hippo is really terrible. Uh, D tier is like cards like that don't ever see play. I feel like this is probably like D tier as well. Like five likes. By the time you reach five likes, I feel like anything relevant for this card has already built up really excellent things. Like green just has really excellent stats already on board, and this doesn't even matter that much. The Ignis guy. This is like okay, right? Like this is a, this is like a like an elemental or like a three cost three three that lets you like trigger Ignis again. But like the Ignis deck isn't that strong. It's probably like C, like a high C. Uh, this guy's pretty awful. This, this might be D tier also. Cost five, and then when you corrupt, you get a, a random adjacent four um, uh, four three guy. I forget his name. I don't know. The three life threshold's reasonably easy to hit. And for a 5 cost creature, it can just get outvalued so hard. Um, Wrath is actually, uh, for what it does, is pretty solid. I think it's like B tier. Like value wise, that's pretty crazy, right? But I don't know, competitively, is that even a B tier? Uh, maybe this is C tier. The plus one archetype is like a C tier deck, probably. Uh, maybe we'll slot it here for now. Because it's only gonna it's only gonna be on the same power level as the deck is, so I don't know. Uh, Baron Sky Vermin's alright, I guess. Um, maybe C tier. Like, this is, this gives you, like, a free combat hit for your, or your uh, face hit for the, well, any, any face hitting things in Yellow Rush. It can be buffed with, like, tower, I don't know. Anything that buffs this is kind of a really bad, like, a not-so-great deck, but there are, like, the, the Vermin OTK decks, but that's not really a B tier. Um, I might put this down to C, to be honest. We'll put it in high C. I think there's a lot of just cards that outweigh this. Vulture is, like, B. I know a lot of people like this card, but it's very situational. Uh, like, 4 land, 
and then you have to deal one damage. Like, they have to have one life remaining, and then you drain his attack. When it works, it's, like, pretty great, but it's very situational, I think. Spectre, I think, is B. Um, Spectre is, like, pretty solid if you can get it going. Um, it's just really, well, yeah, I don't know. It's really expensive to start the game off with five cost, but, like, 3-6 body with charge 3 is pretty excellent. Um, production is a little unfortunate for it because it gives your opponent an opportunity to drop below the 4 card threshold. Wait, Spectre A? You think top A? I don't think it's that good though. It's like, it's pretty solid, but... Um, charge 2 is pointless in Husk to me since all units that should get somewhere get training anyways. Yeah, and like because yeah, actually that's another that's a good that's a good point because um, with like husk lists, you kind of want to build three deserts maybe maximum and then that's it. Um, and with this card, you're forced to build double neutrals, uh, or you just give it training uh, to give it flying, which doesn't really add to the charge too. Yeah. I don't know. It can be kind of clunky sometimes because its ability wins the red matchup. Oh, true. I guess you have to sometimes make wind soldier lands. Yeah, like it's a strong card, but I don't know if it's like excellent. We don't even see this card play it anymore. <laughs> Only suffers versus choking. Although to be fair, we haven't seen a lot of mono yellow husk anyways recently. It's all been red yellow. I uh, wish this doesn't fit in, of course. Uh, like, stat-wise, 3-6, 5 cost, charge 2 is pretty pretty excellent. I don't know. Maybe we'll put it at the, the lower end of A. Uh, okay, Dustbringer Wraith's pretty bad. It's really land-heavy. It's like 3 three land. It's just like, the, the Spectre is just better than this. <laughs> it's like, it does a similar thing, but it's just better. And it doesn't have any mobility attached to it. It has Corrupt. So, like, um, not having mobility with Corrupt is really sad. Wrath is great? Uh, Wraith? Well, wait, 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 it's 4 cost 3-6, right? I guess that's reasonable for the stat line, but... 3-6 is great stat line for 4. Yeah, 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 you're right. That's true. For the cost, it is a pretty great stat line, actually. Uh, I think it's more of B tier, though. Okay, I kind of like this with this B, this A. I don't know. Makes kind of sense. Husk is S to me. Like, the ability is so easy to trigger nowadays, like, it being end step especially. Like, it's one cost, so the turn you play it, you spend one Faria to draw a card, deal one damage, and heal one life, and then it just keeps growing from there. And, like, three life structure is insane to deal with. I don't know. That's ridiculous. And I think we've had many discussions on it. <laughs> Alright, Bloodfly, I think, is pretty excellent. Um, it's, like, kind of on the same level as the uh the vulture but it's just got a little bit more going for it um i mean this is a two cost three three that's pretty exceptional stats you have to build your deck around it what the husk yeah you have to build your desk deck around it but it's so easy to build around it like you literally put husk storyteller and merchant in your list and you it doesn't even matter the rest you put in the list you just put anything else in the list and you have a good deck <laughs> I, I I think I am I think I am never gonna budge on that point. It's it's always S tier to me unless, unless it's changed. Um, yeah yeah, Bloodfly is like really insane. So two cost three three. It does cost four land, but um, it fits the Flyers archetype that wants to go to five land anyway. Really nice. Uh, the corrupt is really awesome. Just step this on an enemy land and you get another free card, another efficient. 2 cost 3-3 three, three body. Pretty excellent. Bannon is kind of a meme. I don't know. It's one of these. It, it does feel weird to put it in C because it's kind of 7 cost Faria. I don't know. Like 7 cost, you have to wait for a really long time to actually play this. And then not only that, but then you have to still play those cards that you get that are super buffed. So really all this does is fill your... Yeah, actually, that's true. It's only a 4 or 5 for 7 cost. Like, making up that, that whole 7 cost value is really difficult to do. Please bring Phantasm up. 
Oh, this one? Yeah, okay. <laughs> D's maybe a little bit too punished. Like, there's just the 5 light count that's really off-putting, and then it transforms it into a 5-3. But, I don't know. I guess it's better than that stuff. Volley feels like a solid uh, B, sorry. Volley feels like a solid B tier to me. Just because it's situational, like, when you don't have a flyer target for it, uh, it's not the best, like, 3 cost, 2 damage. Um, but when there is a flyer target, it's pretty insane. 3 cost, 5 damage. I think B is pretty solid. Uh, Enslaved Priest. I've never really used this card. It's a uh, 3 cost, right? 3 cost, 2, 4. Whenever Corrupt triggers, you get to drain your opponent of 2 life. Um, Stat-wise, uh, like it's pretty solid with the stats and ability. It's just not really used that much. 3 cost 2 for it. Like, it's like a prairie yak for the corrupt archetype. But like, if we're talking about competitive decks, I don't know. Um, it doesn't fit in a lot of places. Like, the yeah, I guess like corrupt isn't really a great thing. Like, the ability would is it, kind of decent on paper, but there's not a lot of corrupt creatures that are good. And corrupt is really difficult to trigger also. Like, you can run this in the, like, the yellow fairies list, maybe, with, like, Drake Rider. But I think it suffers a lot because of the selection of corrupt creatures you have access to. So maybe that'll just go in, like, a high C. Uh, this is the Rainbow Bird ship. This is actually pretty great. I think this is B tier. Um, like, what it does is pretty great. It's, like, 6 cost, 3, 7 flyer, and then you get a free creature, like, a free bird ship crew member, whatever that means. <laughs> uh, and then it makes everything in your hand wild, which enable is mostly enables meme decks, but I think what it gives you is pretty solid. Like, it gives you a free creature, uh, and a 3-7 flyer is a pretty solid body. Birdie is A tier, you think? It's pretty solid what it does, but this isn't ever run in decks, is it? Do you run this in your Green, red? I guess you do. Maybe it's okay. Like, the cards you have access to... Like, what's the worst card you can... Well, okay. Worst card is probably Cartographer, which is, like, 3 cost value. So you're, like, spending 3 Feria for the 3-7. That's pretty crazy. Uh, I guess Reveler is, like, the lowest value. I guess what it does is pretty crazy. It's not run in a lot of decks, though. Cheating out feeds with Salamander is pretty good? That's true. That's true. Yeah, uh, okay. I'll, I'll agree with the A. Uh, Imperial Outpost. How good is this? It's, it's solid, but like the neutral archetype is mostly like B. Uh, it's a pretty solid card. Like, two costs give all your neutrals one attack. Uh, it's a structure. There's not a lot of great neutrals to pair this with, so I think B tier makes sense. Llamacorn, also B. Maybe. Maybe that's a C. This one is 5 cost 5-5, five, five, which is pretty solid, but then it costs 2 lands as well. And like, the combat ability doesn't really benefit that much, I guess. I think the 5-5 five, five stats suffer a little bit. It needs like, more life to get its combat abilities off. Oversky X pretty nice. I think this is... Maybe A. It can kind of be compared to the Explorers. Yeah, this is definitely A, I would think. 4-6 um, Explorer, and this is kind of the same thing. You have to build one special land, and then take three turns building double neutrals. Uh, double neutrals help with your Yak Attack lines. Pretty great stuff. And it's got flying. Okay, actually, it's got flying. I think that bumps it up a little bit. We'll keep it there. Yeah, the Explorers don't have flying. So I kind of like that. Um, this guy is not very good. So the problem with this guy, this is the Priest of Everlife. It's got Gift, the next creature you draw, gains plus two, plus four. The issue with this is that it's random, you can't control it. I mean, you could control it with a Biomancer, I guess. But it's not usually that relevant if you're running Biomancer with it. There's just a lot better things than this to run. Because, like, the only relevant things you want this buff on are, like, Deepwood Stalker. Or frog tosser or something. Uh, maybe like the yellow creatures, the yellow flyers. I guess you could use like smile to get the uh yeah, ghost dragon. Or lionfish. Yeah, that's fair. It's two forests, right? 
something like that. So okay, C tier makes sense. This is Steve, who are, I always call Carl. That's probably B tier. 10 cost, 10, 10. Prevents your opponent's creatures from moving till end of turn. I don't know. It's not actually that good. <laughs> the issue is, is that you can just get around that by using mobility tricks. It's a huge fairy investment, so you can just knock this down. This might be C tier. It's a huge fairy investment for just solid stats. It doesn't have dash, I think. Yeah, I don't think it has dash. It costs four lands. It's actually pretty heavy. I think C tier maybe makes sense. Uh, Roaming Yak, probably also C tier. This is okay. Like, it ramps your, your prairies for, like, the Oversky Yak. Uh, the dash is nice as well. You can kind of, like, get this into double collection on turn two with the Explorer just by shooting all your neutrals off to one side. Uh, it's okay. But, I don't know, it's really it's really vulnerable. Like, I, I, I have run this in my yak list, but I don't know. Um, Chosen's pretty great. This is definitely an A tier. Really solid card. It, six lands is expensive, but uh, six, six, charge three, flying. Six, six, charge three, flying alone is really solid. And then being able to swallow a creature uh, and take control of it is also really insane. Lets you both kill a creature and like almost produce another creature in its place. Tower of Curses is god awful, and I think this is D tier. <laughs> um, so this card looks good on paper, and I know a lot of newer players. Um, I think this card is good as well. But the issue with it is that it's incredibly expensive and does barely anything the turn you play it, which is um, where you want all your impacts to go is on the turn you play it um, a lot of the time. Yeah, so this is four cost, four land, which is insane, and then uh, the, the turn you play it down, it does minus one, minus one. So like, the turn you play it, you're spending four feria and four lands to deal one damage, or like, you know, minus one. Uh, it's just, it's really terrible. <laughs> um, and then it also takes four turns to use all four of its charges, uh, which gives your opponent four entire turns to answer this, or like, hit into it with combat. So you can very easily lose out on all the value there. Ulani is, uh, this is the other Ulani, which is really great. I think this is A tier. Um, uh, if you have no creatures on board, it's a 2 cost, 2, 4, and then it gains Taunt and Protection and Divine if you have no creatures on board, uh, which is really insane for uh, 2 cost. Um, often hard to find places for this in deck lists because it costs 4 land, and it's just a 1 of, but uh, it is a really uh, exceptional card. Vergeron Emissary is probably C tier. Um, the issue with this one, like this is another one that's good on paper. I think a lot of these cards, like, the abilities look really cool and good, but they're not. I guess it's not that bad What stat-wise. Like, it's 5 cost 4 or 5, and then you get plus 1 plus 1 to everything in your hand. I guess B tier is okay for it, because, like, Feria value-wise it's okay. Um, the issue with this is that there's just a lot better things you want to do with it. You also want this to die, but it doesn't fit in a sacrifice list because it's too expensive to sacrifice. You don't want to sacrifice this. Um, and Oakling is a much better feed the forest target, so you don't want to run this in a feed deck, really. So it just kind of loses a place uh, for this to fit in a deck. Like, competitively, I think this should be judged more on, like, a competitive basis. It's probably more C tier. Like, Feria value-wise is okay, but it's also just a- it's also just a body that can't move. It's not mobile. To kill this off, you have to kind of invest some resources to, like, maybe teleport it around or something. Um, the Yak Herder is amazing in Yaks. This is a really good card. Um, uh, 3 cost 2, 3, and then you get to give 2 yaks, charge 2, and plus 2 attack this turn. That's really exceptional. Um, definitely A tier. The <laughs> Savior of the Meek, I think, is D. 
<laughs> um, almost a meme. This is pretty terrible. Like, stat-wise, it's a 2-cost 1-2 that gives a plus 2, plus 2 buff. Uh, and divine. Which is okay. But the issue with this is that, like, a lot of the things you that have one attack aren't really... They don't really need divine. Like, divine doesn't really add much to their... To that creature. And divine is usually going to protect against... Is either going to protect your little guys from soul drains and things, or it's going to protect your big guys from Nightmare and Frogify. But, like, if you're making a little guy... If you're giving a buff to a little guy anyways, you're already stepping out of soul drain threshold, and it's probably not going to step into Nightmare threat... Like, a decent Nightmare target anyways. So, like, usually just any buff is better in every way. Like, there's just a little something missing from this card to make it okay. Um, four lands is a lot to make it work. Um, Thunder Eel is pretty excellent. I think this is A tier. Uh, Thunder Eel is just a lot of value for what it does. Six, four, six cost, and then deal two damage to something on board. That's pretty excellent. It's like a flying explorer with a Cypher's Wrath attached to it. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. I'll be back in like two months with the next tier list, probably. <laughs> Alright, well, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you guys next time.